Hello and welcome to the Supercast. I'm your host, Superintendent Anthony Godfrey. Governor Spencer Cox has launched a statewide campaign to address the impact of social media on students. On this episode of the Supercast, we sit down with one of the governor's senior advisors, Amy Winder Newton, who also serves as the director of the governor's new Office of Families. She tells us how the public awareness campaign hopes to empower parents and provide them with the tools they need to educate their kids about the potential harms from using social media. We're honored today to have Amy Winder Newton in the studio. Amy is a member of the Salt Lake County Council as well as a senior advisor and director of the new Office of Families in the Governor's Office. So thank you very much for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Tell me a little bit about your work in the Office of Families. That's a new position uh, that we're all excited about. It is. Well, uh, um, about a year and a half ago, the governor, when he did his State of the State address, talked about how we need to be looking proactively at how to better strengthen families. Um, We want the best outcomes for kids, and we know that that happens through strong families. And so he developed this position, and I was hired a year ago. And so we've got some initiatives that we've set out to accomplish and some policy objectives, and it's been a a great ride. Well, we're really grateful to have you in that position. And I know part of that has been helping the governor and, and pushing this campaign to help raise awareness with families regarding the dangers of social media. And when you look through the materials, which I've done, I appreciated the chance to be there when uh, the campaign was announced. What's staggering really is the statistics that you see. It's difficult to see it in numbers. We know the impact that it has, but when you see the hard numbers that show just how frequently students are involved, how deeply they're involved with social media, and the obvious negative impacts, it's, it's, it's really harrowing to see that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and and you as school administrators and our school teachers and others in the classroom, they see the impact, right? You you see how it's impacting kids. So just a few data points. Um, In Utah, only 37% of our Utah youth got at least eight hours of sleep on an average school night. So you know how important it is for kids to be to school well-rested and ready to learn, and these kids are not getting enough sleep. Now, this is all according to the SHARP survey, which has been a great help for us as we look at data for our Utah youth. Um, Some other data points, 32% of Utah youth felt sad or hopeless for two weeks or more in a row during the past year, and 18%, that's one in six of our Utah youth seriously considered suicide in the past year. So it's very concerning. Um, We do have some other interesting data points too because social media seems to affect young women at a a higher rate than it does young men. So 53% of female high school students had persistent persistent feelings of sadness or hopelessness, which is a 61% increase since 2009 when social media was invented. So some of these numbers are startling. We see this correlation and causation between social media and how it's impacting our kids, and we need our parents to get engaged on this. The correlation, it was 2009, right, when yes. social media really took off and, and where the statistics got really bad for teens. It, it's really difficult to ignore that timing. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at the graphs that show like emergency room visits for self-harm from 2009, 2010 till now, I mean, it's like a hockey stick. It's so extreme. And so, um, you know, we're very concerned. In fact, we did a a survey of Utah parents before we started this campaign to just kind of gauge where everyone was. And we at least know 88% of our parents believe there's some sort of detrimental effect on the mental health of their children using social media. So we know that um, parents believe that there's a detrimental effect and what we need to do now is give them some some help and part of what the state's trying to do besides this campaign and educating parents of the harmful effects of social media we're doing things like legislation to help rein in social media companies right. um, lawsuits to to um, we, we've also we also have lawsuits that we're looking at for harm that's been caused to our Utah youth. And so there's things there, but the governor's incredibly concerned about the mental health of our youth. And we're just grateful that Jordan School District understands this and and your great leadership to help us figure out how we can get this message out. 
Well, the governor's been a strong voice, a strong advocate for mental health issues for Absolutely. students for a long time. He's told his own story uh, about how he struggled as a teen. Yes. And I think that's powerful. And, and I really appreciate your focus and his focus on this issue. Uh, tell us, you know, first, first it's that you want to make sure that parents are aware of the harm that can be done, of the dangers of social media so that we're not dismissive of that. But then you're also giving tips for parents on how they can engage and help manage that with their teen. Yeah. Tell me, tell me about some of that, those suggestions for parents. Yeah, so let me share five tips um, that we've been talking about. The first one is creating a family media plan. So this is everything from having open discussions and setting expectations to deciding ahead of time what the rules will be. So for instance, when I had kids, my kids are all now young adults, but when they were at home and they were, um, they were teens, we had a rule that they had to check their cell phones in our bedrooms at night. Yeah. And so they'd plug in their phone. I did have one kid one time try to be sneaky and put just the <laughs> phone case with the little plug going into it, but we caught on and uh, that was the end of that. So you know, that's a good that's a good <laughs> trick for me to be aware of. Yeah, yeah. Be, kids be listening, aware. don't try this at home. Don't because try it this won't at work. home. That's right. So parents are smarter than that. But we, we liked having it in our bedroom because we said, you know what, at nine yeah. o'clock, phones checked in. Um, so that it wasn't distracting them. It wasn't keeping right. them up late at night. And My 14-year-old so, plugs his phone in, in the kitchen, in a particular spot. And we even don't have to ask much anymore because it just kind of happens. It's become a habit that the phone doesn't go downstairs at night. So. That's awesome. Well, and I feel like if you are if you set the standard with the, the first child, the, the rest know, oh, it's not worth the battle because mom and dad aren't going to cave. So. And I do like that you said you set the standard in advance because if in the midst of an important interaction, suddenly there's a rule, then that doesn't work. Right, right. And and as part of that family media plan, I mean, that can go to TV, to gaming, to anything else. Sure. But having those expectations ahead of time. And, you know, we even have some parents who have a little contract with their kids that you can only use it for this amount of time and during these hours and everything. And then they agree as parents that, um, you know, if you come to us and, and tell us about something inappropriate you've seen, we agree to not overreact and get angry, um, that we will always be supportive of, of your endeavors. And anyway, they kind of have this mutual contract. And so there's a few ways you can create the family media plan, but talking about it in advance and setting those expectations and having your kids even be involved in that is a really good way to do it. So that's sure. the first one. Okay. Um, second one, create tech-free zones and encourage children to foster in-person relationships. So mm -hmm. one of the biggest issues that we see right now is a lack of human connection and how it's affecting kids and adults. And, and you know, going through COVID and, and all of that, that there, there was an impact there right. with that human connection piece. And so, um, you know, right now we've got kids walking through the halls at school glued to their phones. They're not saying hi, they're not connecting, yeah. and they're missing that in-person connection. They're missing that, that they can't just be friends over a device. You have to have that in-person connection for you to really feel that and have it positively impact your mental health. And a device is a really easy way to extricate yourself from a an awkward social situation. Yes. And even adults do that. While I'm standing around for a second, okay, I'm going to look at my phone and now I feel comfortable right. because I, I don't feel like I, I'm obviously standing here alone not talking to someone right and, and and as a result the disengagement just kind of perpetuates itself that's right well and as parents when we set those tech free zones i mean it's easy to say okay everybody we're checking our phones in during dinner time or when we have family activities or whether we're weeding or watching a movie together yeah. um bedtime setting that bedtime uh time that we talked about is really important as well yeah, you're right. I need to be better at dinner time. I didn't know how you knew that, but I do need to be better at dinner <laughs> That's time. That's why I'm here, Dr. I know. Godfrey. You're here to help. You're here to help. Yes. Stay with us when we come back. More tips on what parents can do to prevent some of the potential negative impacts from student use of social media. Hello, I'm Stacy Worthen, Secondary Counseling Specialist for Jordan School District. Do you know all the ways Jordan School District counselors can help you and your student? School counselors play such an important role in our schools. They provide parents with resources to help guide their children in academics. 
They provide support with the mental and social well-being of students in our schools. And if you are in the process of preparing a student for college or just beginning the conversation of higher education, now is the perfect time to reach out to your child's counselor. We can assist with college applications and college readiness. I encourage parents and guardians to schedule an appointment and get to know your student's counselor. Together, counselors and parents can help develop plans and strategies for students to succeed long after they leave Jordan School District. Reach out. We're always here to help. You can find us and learn more at counseling.jordandistrict.org. So the third one is, and this one goes along with what we were just saying, model responsible social media behavior. Yes. You know, there's a study that came out of the Wheatley Institute that showed that what affects a kid's mental health even more than them being on social media was how much their parents are on social media. Hmm. So when a kid has to compete with Instagram or TikTok for their parents' attention, it's sending a pretty strong message to that child. We need parents to model good behavior with their their devices that's a really important point and you know i'm getting emails day and night and it's really easy for me to just remain engaged with that unless i'm very intentional about as you described thinking about the idea that i'm setting an example and i need to have these zones that are that are tech free yeah well and i think i mean what message is it sending to our spouses and others in our life when sure. you know we're choosing our phones over over that human interaction so the fourth one is work with other parents to establish shared norms and practices so this is working with your kids friends parents hmm. to say okay our kids are all friends let's agree on which apps or which uh, means of communication we're going to allow our kids to have. And if you have this coalition with other parents to say, we're not going to do Snapchat or we're yeah. not going to do, you know, we're not going to have these apps. We we want our kids to be texting each other instead or whatever sure. it is. Um, so much easier to convince your kids that they're not the only ones that have to do this. Now, I will add a caveat um, sometimes the other parents aren't willing to do it or they don't stick to it. And you know what? You just have to be brave and you yeah. have to be courageous as parents and say, this is my kid. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to do what I think is right for them, no matter what their friends, parents do. So, um, but that does help if you can get a group and rally together, it helps our kids. So, and then the fifth one is reconsider allowing your child to use social media, period. Um, our governor has a 16 year old daughter. They do not allow her to use social media yet. Um, I had a neighbor who they didn't allow their daughter to use social media. Yeah. And it's interesting. She's 20 now. And I remember there were battles. It was hard. Um, she's 20 now. And she will tell you, she's so grateful. She saw what that did to the other girls that she was in school with. And she was so grateful her parents stuck to their guns and that she didn't have it. Now, they, they found creative ways to do it. So, for instance, um, she had an Instagram account, but she could only use it on her mom's iPad. Oh. And so she'd get permission from her mom to upload her dance pictures or things like that so that she wasn't totally out. I see. But um, it was limited. It wasn't on her phone. It was on her mom's iPad. And, you know, she'd get a few minutes to, to do that. And then it stops the continual scrolling or checking back to see what kind of feedback they're getting from likes and comments and, and that type of thing. And so there's a way that you can do it. Um, but... I think parents are going to find it's going to become more popular to just say, we're, we're not going to let you have social media yet. And even our Surgeon General came out and said, 13 is too young. Consider yeah. 16, 17, or 18 and figure out when your child is mature enough. But he, the U.S. Surgeon General has said, 13 is too young. Well, one of the statistics that I found uh, on your website is in a national survey of girls 11 to 15, one third or more say they feel addicted to a social media platform. So a third of girls who are not even at the age where we would recommend that they even start with yes. social media, they're already addicted. Yeah, it's very addicting. I mean, they, they're creating algorithms to try to keep people on. That's, that's part of it. So um, this is an issue. And it's an issue for adults, too. But, but our kids' brains aren't fully developed. And so that's why we're seeing such major impacts to their mental health. I think it's also impactful when, uh, as part of the campaign, I've heard discussions about 
how social media is created to be addictive. Right. And I think especially as a teen and even as an adult, once you understand that they are deliberately trying to addict you to your interactions on social media, you're much more cautious about how you approach it. That's right. That's right. Well, and, and even in our TV ads that we're doing with this, you know, you show we show a child with a mask on and it looks like they're smiling and they're scrolling on their phones and everything's a-okay and you start seeing the negative messages they're getting about their body or or that they have no friends or or whatever and then the mask comes off and you see them crying and a parent's there to put their arm around and take the phone away and that's kind of what we're trying to help parents understand is your kids are hurting inside Um, if you ask high schoolers if everybody had to get rid of social media is that better or um, if some can have it and some don't and, and they'll say if everybody got rid of it that would be that would be better for us it would be better for our mental health but there's they're worried about the social piece and the level playing field because yeah. it is such an in- integrated part one of the things that we've even said for our schools is hey figure out a different platform to advertise your activities I mean there's some apps out there that um, are not social media based that can still advertise and show fun games and and sports events and the things that are happening at the school but it's not now kids having to go to Twitter or Facebook or sure. Instagram to find out what's going on at the school. It's it's in a, an app format. So, I mean, there's ways our schools can even be involved to help. No, I think those are great suggestions. And uh, Unmask the Dangers of Social Media, that's the name of the campaign. Yes. And I do think those ads are very impactful. And, you know, when you... Again, I go back to the statistics. Teen who sp- teens who spend more than three hours per day on social media face double the risk of experiencing poor mental health outcomes. Uh, according to a survey of 8th and 10th graders, the average time spent on social media is 3.5 hours per day. So when you couple those together, you know, social media is difficult to, to manage, especially for younger kids. Well, and get this, this statistic is startling to me. Almost 60% of teen girls say they've been contacted on social media by a stranger in ways that made them feel uncomfortable. So we're dealing with lots of issues with social media. You've got the potential predator issues. Um, you know, we hear of the sextortion cases and, and even um, other issues there. Exposure to inappropriate material that is, is not um, appropriate for their age. But then there's other things they're getting feedback on body image. I mean, the body image issue is huge for girls, especially. Um, Depending on your worth being based on likes and comments and and all of that, like there's the filters now where nobody knows what's real anymore and how that's distorting their body image. I mean, there's just so many issues that, um, that we're concerned about. And some of the issues, as you described, are just obviously problematic, obviously harmful. But many are insidious. They're not obviously on their face as they don't appear to be as damaging as they really are. Right, exactly. Thus the mask analogy, right? Right. Parents may think that everything's just fine with their kids as they're sitting there scrolling and inside they're hurting. And, And we want to engage, educate, and empower those parents. We need their help. We need them to be brave. We need them to be courageous and to stand up and figure out what is right for their children. And we highly recommend that you think twice about your child using social media. Tell me about the reaction you've received to the to the campaign. You know, we have had so many positive comments about the campaign, even from people who um, have kind of been naysayers in the past on some of this. They've loved it because what we want to do is help give parents a, re- a reality check, really, on what's happening with their children. And um, so we've had great great comments from parents, from even from other teens and those who are on social media. Well, it is a complex issue for families because there are different levels of involvement that parents are accustomed to and, st- and, and children are accustomed to. But the bottom line is that really an intentional approach that's informed with an understanding of how these, how these social media sites work, the, the statistics on the potential harm, and really keeping in mind the ideas for managing it in a way that makes sense for your family. It's all very important information, and I'm really grateful for the campaign and for the work you and the governor are doing to get the word out. Well, thank you, and we appreciate the leadership um, with Jordan School District. Um, The governor is so grateful for all the hard work that you guys do to educate our kids and to be involved. You know, it's interesting how our schools now 
are expected not just to help with learning and, and education, but so many other facets of right. um, of a child's life. And so we know that you, you see the impacts as well. So thank you. Well, thanks for all your efforts. Thanks for taking time with us today. And it's great to be working together with you on this important issue. Thank you. Thanks for everything. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Supercast. Remember, education is the most important thing you'll do today. We'll see you out there.